Welcome back to RealScreenReviews.com. I'm movie critic Nick Iacobucci, and today we'll be counting down the 10 best films that revolve around the law and legal system. I will give you what I believe to be all great feature films and all that deal in and around the courtroom. We will start with some honorable mentions and then we will get right to it, and that's because with YouTube there's only so much time. Okay, I'm going to begin with some honorable mentions and in no particular order, mind you. How about And Justice for All, starring Al Pacino? Then the movie that made Matthew McConaughey a household name, A Time to Kill? And Humphrey Bogart in The Kane Mutiny? There's also the wonderful George Clooney as a Mr. Fix-It lawyer in Michael Clayton, and Ron Silver as real-life attorney Alan Dershowitz in Barbe Schroeder's Reversal of Fortune. Finally, I gotta mention the great courtroom comedy My Cousin Vinny with Joe Pesci and Marissa Tomei. Now our countdown begins with the 10th best courtroom drama, and my pick is Primal Fear. This excellent mystery and drama stars Richard Gere in one of the best performances of his career as attorney Martin Vale and launched the career of then a young and unknown actor named Edward Norton. Also starring Laura Linney and John Mahoney, Primal Fear was directed by Gregory Hoblet and tells the tale of an altar boy on trial for the violent killing of a well-respected priest. As the story unfolds, the truth is hidden under many layers of mystery and intrigue and ends with a surprise that will shock most viewers. My choice for the number nine best court drama is Oliver Stone's excellent JFK. Kevin Costner brilliantly brought to life Southern attorney Jim Garrison who unsuccessfully tried to prosecute individuals for the assassination of John Kennedy. With a star-studded cast including everyone from Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon to Tommy Lee Jones and Gary Oldman, JFK is a masterpiece in quality filmmaking. This was Kevin Costner at the top of his game in one of those times when three hours flew by feeling almost like 30 minutes. My number eight brings us to Billy Wilder's impressive and entertaining witness for the prosecution. This 1958 noir drama starred Charles Lawton, Marlena Dietrich, and a wonderful Tyrone Power cast completely against type. This was an Agatha Christie story adapted for the big screen by director Billy Wilder and is filled with twists, turns, and surprises. The film had such a surprise ending that a disclaimer was added to the end of it specifically to ask the audience not to ruin it for others that hadn't seen it. For those that have not seen it, here's the surprise ending. Just kidding, of course. Now, my number seven brings us to the Aaron Sorkin written and Rob Reiner directed drama involving the court-martial of two Marines entitled A Few Good Men. Tom Cruise shines as Lieutenant Daniel Caffey struggling to free two Marines on trial for their lives and up against the hard-nosed leader of Guantanamo Bay's Marine base, Colonel Nathan R. Jessup, portrayed by the great Jack Nicholson. Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon, and Kiefer Sutherland star alongside Tom Cruise in this magnificent courtroom tale that pits Caffey against Jessup in a head-to-head -head and brilliant rhetoric and leads up to a satisfying and climactic finish. My number six pick as the best tale in a courtroom is the 1957 Sidney Lumet drama that takes place out of the courtroom and actually takes place in the jury room. That movie is, of course, Twelve Angry Men. Henry Fonda leads a cast of legends including Jack Kludman, Lee J. Cobb, Jack Warden, Marty Balsam, and E.G. Marshall, and this tale unfolds with Fonda slowly managing to convince the other jurors, jurors of the reasonable doubt of the defendant on trial. Little by little he chips away at the ignorance and bigotry of the others on one of the hottest days of the year, and in the process gives us one of the best dramas of all time. Halfway through our list gives us To Kill a Mockingbird, arriving at number five. The Pulitzer Prize winning novel by Harper Lee comes to vivid life with Gregory Peck starring in the lead as Atticus Finch. Peck won the Academy Award for this role and portrays a lawyer in the racially divided Alabama circa the 1930s. In this tale, he takes on a trial where a black man is accused of raping a white woman, and this easy case proves to be anything but because of the racially driven townspeople that will do nothing to believe the obvious innocence of the defendant. A tale of drama, a tale of sympathy, a tale of humanity, To Kill a Mockingbird holds up as true today as it did 51 years ago. Now what I believe to be the fourth best film about a courtroom is what I picked as the best film of 1996 and that would be The People vs. Larry Flint. Woody Harrelson's best hour as an actor is when he portrayed Hustler Magazine's publisher Larry Flint. Milos Forman directed this life story about the adult magazine pioneer and champion of the First Amendment. Now, being a writer and speaker of expressing my own opinions, I have always believed that America is the strongest country in the world because we are the freest country in the world. And yes, that is spoken dialogue right out of the film. 
Courtney Love and Edward Norton also star in this remarkably interesting and entertaining drama, and the tale about the legalization of porn, as well as the most important and basic right of all Americans, is just fascinating. Now this brings us to the top three, and into the top three brings us the Jim Sheridan Daniel Day-Lewis drama, In the Name of the Father. This is another true story adaptation that shows us the tale of Jerry Conlon and his wrongful incarceration for 15 years involving a terrorist bombing. This is never a whodunit, but instead focuses on the struggle to get him and his family exonerated for this heinous crime. Emma Thompson portrays the attorney struggling to clear his name, and the late and great Pete Postlewaite stars as his dad, Giuseppe Conlon, whose life ended behind bars for a crime he did not commit. Put into the simplest of terms, this is one of the best experiences that I have ever had in a movie theater, and this is one of the best films ever made. If you have never seen the movie In the Name of the Father, then do yourself a favor and rent it right now, today, and go watch it, because it really is just a remarkable film. Wow, we're already at number two, and my choice as the runner-up of the best courtroom drama of all time is Otto Preminger's Anatomy of a Murder. James Stewart, Lee Remick, Ben Gazzara, and the amazing George C. Scott bring to life one of the most realistic adventures to revolve around the American legal system. Once again, this is not a whodunit, but this tale brings the defense of temporary insanity to the forefront. This is one of the best features ever made and eluded the number one position only because of its anticlimactic finale. However, every bit of this production is four star from start to finish and every performance is stand out. Impressively assembled, brilliantly acted, fun, dramatic, and most of all, intelligent and racy for the time, Anatomy of a Murder still holds up today as the definition of great dramatic cinema. Now the number one courtroom movie of all time lands at the top of the list because of the fantastic climactic finale, and that is for Paul Newman's drama, The Verdict. This is the second film on the list to be directed by Sidney Lumet, and in my opinion is without question Paul Newman's finest hour as an actor. This tale portrays Newman as a washed up attorney, and he is attempting to salvage his career and self-respect by taking on a medical malpractice case. James Mason, Jack Warden, and Charlotte Rampling co-star and help to solidify this as a towering work of cinematic achievement. This is the best example of a satisfying conclusion and grand finale, but the story arc and solid portrayal of Newman propel this to cinematic excellence. The verdict, in my opinion, is the absolute best courtroom drama of all time. Now, I'm sure that I've missed some here and there, and I'm also quite sure that some people will agree to disagree with my choices. Please feel free to comment below what your favorite legal drama is and why, because any thoughts and opinions are always welcomed here. Well, that's all I got time for today, people. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button and give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure I'll be back soon enough with more movie news and reviews. And until next time, remember, people, I'm not always right, but only when it comes to the movies. And thank you for your attention.